Welcome back to Clean Academy. This season, we're taking a deeper look at clean ingredients. We've invited a few of the industry's leading experts, scientists, brand founders, beauty insiders, to share everything you wanna know about the ingredients in your skincare routine. Now, there are a ton of ingredients and products out there, but you don't need to be a chemist to understand how to read an ingredient label or know how a product is working for your skin. I'm Ashley Nunes, a scientist at Amaris, the biotechnology company behind Biosans' signature squalane ingredient. And today I have here with me Kara Bondi, the VP of Product Development from Ursa Major. So I think today we'll actually look at what oils are, what they do for our skin, mm -hmm. and how we can choose the best oil for our skin types. But before we get into that, Kara, can you tell us a little about your background? Sure, uh, I've been working in product development for about 20 years. I'm a molecular biologist by training and I've spent a lot of time in clean beauty at brands like Ursa Major and Tata Harper. Well, I have a degree in chemistry and I think I've come to clean beauty from a, a little different of an aspect or a journey. I have been at Amaris for eight years now and have seen the, I'd call it the ingredient process from end to end. So I started on the manufacturing side and now I'm more on the technical side where I'm able to provide education to brands and also consumers to empower them so they're able to make the best decisions for themselves. That's great, Ashley. I think these are both two very important perspectives on ingredients, so I think this conversation is going to be great. Let's get into the meat of things. What are oils? So I know that oils are hydrophobic, and that means that they're water fearing mm -hmm. and they can help to moisturize the skin. So what I would say about oils is that your body and your skin are made of all sorts of different oils. So they're a natural part of your skin and they're critical to healthy skin. So a lot of people think of oil and they think, I don't want oil in my skin, but having a balanced amount of oil in the skin is really the key to glow. One of the major functions of oil in the skin is to help lock moisture in so that your skin stays hydrated and supple. If we think of a boiling pot of water, and if you take a lid off the boiling pot, all of the water evaporates and eventually you're left with no water. Right. But if you put a lid on that pot, mm -hmm. actually the water stays almost trapped in mm -hmm. the pot. And so oils are working in the same way to kind of create that lid on your skin mm -hmm. and trapping in the moisture. Right, exactly, that's a great analogy. One of the great things that oil can do for the skin is act as supplements. Oils like omega fatty acids, omega-6 and omega-3, your body can't make, so we have to supplement those. And then as you age, your body starts making less of certain oils and you know we need to replenish those. So adding them topically is a really great way to maintain your nutrient balance of your skin. So what are some of the additional benefits of oils? One of the things that oils are great for is deep cleaning and makeup removal. Oils are able to deep clean because they can get into the pores. So if you really wanna get out all of the gunk in your pores, oil cleansing is really the best way to do it. After you oil cleanse, if you follow up with an oil, you're not only locking in the moisture of your skin, but you're also shielding your skin and blocking out those environmental pollutants because then they can't really penetrate. Wow, so it sounds like oils are great for moisture. They can help with a deep clean. Mm -hmm. They can help keep pollutants out. Right. And they can give you that little afternoon glow. Yeah. So now that we know a lot of the benefits that oils can provide in our mm -hmm. skincare routine, mm -hmm. there are also a lot of misconceptions, I think, with oils. And the most common one that I've heard is, are oils comedogenic or do they clog your pores? Yeah, that is a very, very common question and a common misconception. And unfortunately, do oils clog my pores doesn't have a yes, no answer. Mm -hmm. It's really more about the oil and the composition of the oil. And we actually have a scale that we use to measure how likely an oil is to clog your pores. I'm so glad you brought that up because I think it's time for our demonstration. Let's right. go check it out. So Kara, we have our beaker of water. Mm -hmm. And what do you have here? This is a vial of oil. And what happens when we pour the oil in the water? Well, let's see. And so as you can see, the oil has created 
that film on top or that layer, mm -hmm. that lid that we were talking about with the boiling pot of water. And this is also a great example of why you would use oils last in your skincare routine. So one of the other great things I love about oils is that they're so versatile. Definitely. So as we saw, they lock in moisture by creating this lid on your skin when you use them just by themselves. But they can also be ingredients in different products. So you can see oils in serums, in moisturizers, and cleansers. And the way that we're actually able to do that is the formulation chemists and the product development team uses an emulsifier which is able to bind the oils and the waters together to give those lush creamy textures. So there are a lot of different oils out there. So let's talk about a few of the most common that we see in the skincare industry. So the first one we have here is squalane and with squalane what you want to be careful of is how it's sourced. Originally, squalane was sourced from animals. It was derived from shark liver. As consumers, you really shifted the industry to require a more sustainable, more ethical source. So now, most of the squalane that you see in the market is plant-derived, either from olives or from sugarcane. Mm -hmm. So squalane often gets confused with squalene. So squalene is a natural moisturizing molecule that's found in the skin. So we're born with it in our skin sebum. And as you age, some of the oils in your skin tend to diminish over time. So the squalene is diminishing. Our bodies don't have a way of replenishing that. And so what we've done is we've created a more stable version that is very similar to the squalene. So the stable version is squalane, and it's your body's best moisturizer. So I know a lot about squalane, but as we mentioned, there are a lot of popular oils out there. So Kara, can you help us understand some of these popular oils? Sure, definitely. Um, here we have squalane, as you know, mineral oil, argan oil, jojoba oil, and coconut oil. And we have them in order of their comedogenicity. And as we discussed, there's a scale that we use to determine how likely an oil is to clog your pores. So squalane is a zero. Mineral oil is a zero, which I think a lot of people find surprising. Absolutely. Argan oil is a zero. Jojoba oil is a two. And coconut oil is a four. And just because coconut oil is a four doesn't necessarily mean it's going to clog your pores. It depends on your own skin's biochemistry as well as whether or not it's mixed with other oils. So it's very, very individualized. So mineral oil is a very light oil. It's very silky, it absorbs very quickly and it doesn't clog your pores. However, there are some concerns with mineral oil from a contamination perspective. Mineral oil, has been linked to some health concerns and it isn't a sustainable oil. So squalane is actually an excellent swap for mineral oil. You get the same silky feel without any of the concern. Argon oil is excellent for helping balance your sebum. So if you have oily skin um, or combination skin, argon can be very, very helpful. And again, it's, it's a zero on the comedogenicity scale and it's very light and absorbs really quickly. Now, Kara, I've also seen that argan oil is actually pretty popular for hair care as well. Yes, yes, it's great for hair, very moisturizing. It helps with split ends and dryness. Um, it's also great for shine. Jojoba oil is actually a liquid wax, which is a fun fact. It's very similar to your skin's own sebum, so extremely biocompatible and not likely to clog pores. Coconut oil is very popular. We're seeing coconut oil everywhere. Where it's in makeup, it's in lip gloss, it's in body care, face care, hair care. Coconut oil has a lot of great properties. It's full of vitamin E, which is an excellent antioxidant, and it's also extremely moisturizing because of the very, very high lipid content. The downside to coconut oil is that for some people, it can clog pores, so if you're acne prone or have oily skin, it might not be your go-to. Which one is your favorite? So squalane is great because it's very light. It leaves your skin with a nice satin finish not greasy, not oily. I like to use it as a replacement for dimethicone, and it's generally a great thing to add into pretty much any formulation. Thanks so much for all of your insight, Kara. It's been really helpful to see how all of the oils work. So now that we know how oils work, Let's debunk. So we talked a little bit about the misconceptions on whether oils are comedogenic, so whether they're poor clogging. And I know another misconception is that people with oily skin don't need oils. 
and that's not true. No, definitely not true. So when your skin is oily, it just means that you're producing more oil than you need. And the typical reaction is to use products that just strip away the oil, and that just results in your skin producing even more oil. So if you find an oil that agrees with your skin, it's going to bring everything back into balance and actually help your oily skin become more normal. And are there oils that you would recommend for people with oily skin? I think squalane is a great oil for people with oily skin, as well as tea tree. Those are, are really helpful in balancing out the oil content. So another popular misconception is that you should only use oils in the winter. You can use oil all year round, and like anything in your skincare regimen, there may be oils that you prefer when it's more humid or when it's colder. It's just about finding the right mix for you, but they are absolutely for use all the time. So another thing I've heard is that serums and oils are basically the same thing. Is that true? Definitely not. So serums are concentrated benefits for your skin. So wrinkles, hyperpigmentation, these are the sorts of skin concerns that serums are really, really designed for. Oils, on the other hand, operate on a higher level of skin, so serums get down deep, oils are more superficial, and they have sort of broad benefits. So they've got vitamins, they've got fatty acids, they have all of these other things to supplement your skin in a way that serums may not necessarily do depending on how they're formulated. What oils are best for different types of skin? For sensitive skin, I like to always recommend broad spectrum hemp oil. It has lots and lots of benefits for calming redness, being an anti-inflammatory, et cetera. Really dry skin, you want something with a higher essential fatty acid content, so omega-6, omega-3. So in that case, it's something like a um, evening primrose or a black currant seed oil. If you're worried about fine lines, wrinkles, visible signs of aging, rosehip seed and sea buckthorn berry seed oil are very excellent. Both of those have many, many bioactive compounds and they're also high in vitamin A, which is a naturally occurring form of retinol. For people with acne prone skin, you want something that's low on the comedogenicity scale. Mm -hmm. So squalene is a great example. Um, argon can be helpful and tea tree oil is another one that can be really good. What kind of oils do you use in your routine? So I use squalene, but I usually mix it with a few other oils. So my skin never looks even no matter what I do. There's always some redness or some weirdness going on. Um, so that's where the broad spectrum hemp oil comes in. For me, it, it really helps even everything out. You know, I'm in my 40s and I'm getting some fine lines. I really love um, black currant seed, rose hip, and sea buckthorn seed. They have made a real difference for me. Well, I think we really learned a lot today. Kara, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. And for more videos, please visit Biosance's YouTube channel and additional resources at cleanacademy.com. Thanks for watching.